Hey, everybody. Tim, Steve, Matt, Juan, Gregory, David, Christian. I don't know who B. Tom is. <laughs> Tim, how are you, man? All right, everybody, we're going to get rock and rolling on here. Um, whenever Paul puts these videos together for the on the website where you can click through them, here's the trading disclosure that's on here. I got to put it on. If you can read that, let's make, take the snapshot of it. Everything is trade at your own risk, blah, blah, blah. You know, the rest of it, you can read through here. Uh, you've seen these on everybody's website that's on there. Just trying to stay good in here. Have you guys seen uh, the updates on our website? Make sure you guys click all panelists and attendees or the other people won't be able to see. Let's see. Well, oh, can everybody see the screen okay? All right. I was going to say, is everybody awake? <laughs> that uh, Now we've updated our website. It looks different now. If you look on here, we are on, what is it? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 platforms now. Infinity, Motive Wave, Trade Ideas, Trading View. MetaTrader 4, Daily FX, Multi Charts Ninja, uh, IG, TradeStation, and Thinkorswim. That uh, we're all over the place. It's on there. But everybody knows tonight I always use TradingView, is what that is the wave of the future. Um, and it works just for an update for everybody. If um, I've been working with the, uh, team over at TradingView, and if most of you all are on here uh, from following my Twitter, but dot D charts is coming very soon. Um, that is a much needed thing um, with a lot of uh, training that a lot of us have had at, uh, when we attended OTA, or if you've taken Bob's class, um, you know, you need a dot D chart to get an accurate representation of the day session. Um, Sometime in the future for share bars is coming up. I don't know. Uh, there's no set ETA for that, but dot D is coming like quite soon. Um, a lock button is coming for, let me see here. Let me shrink this down. Put this over here. A lock button, uh, for instance, if, you guys know when I do say, say you're doing a price zone or whatever you're putting on here, you have to go back in here, right click this and lock it. And what they're going to add is another box like right down here somewhere that says uh, auto lock. And then when you save it as a default, it'll automatically be locked when you drop it. That way you don't come over here and grab this and accidentally drag it somewhere else on the chart. Uh, Nice. So that one, oh, excuse me, it's unlocked. So there we go. I grabbed it. So if you accidentally grab it, it's going to move around instead of right clicking and locking it. Um, then we've got global symbol link so that right now um, you could only have your trading view inside of, now if you have a big monitor, it's fine. Uh, but if you have multiple monitors, I can't like say, uh, not this one here, Let, let's say this uh, here. If I want to bust out this dome 
and move it. Uh, well, let's see, let's go to regular ES. If I want to disconnect this, undock, I can't drag it over to my other monitor. So if you're, say you got three trades going on or you're wanting to possibly trade, uh, you can't move, I can't have this with three different deals. So I could create a chart, say with ES, NASDAQ, Dow, whatever, uh, have them all on there and then have one of these for each one over on my other monitor. That That is coming uh, soon. And that, uh channel alerts so you know how much i love my channels but if you are doing a channel from say here to here you will be able to right click on the channel or the, somehow or another it may be over here underneath the alerts uh yeah the hot list i believe is what it is Anyhow, there'll be a button over here for, or there it is, the alarm clock, to set an alert and you'll be able to uh, pick whether you want an alert on one or two or all three of the channel, of the, the channel top, the center or the bottom. So for instance, if this is an uptrend, <clears throat> say I am not interested in taking any shorts on here because we're in an uptrend. So I only want to be notified if we hit this bottom channel line. I can set an alert for only on that bottom channel line, which is going to be awesome. Uh, we're also working on, uh, you guys that are members of the 5k club, it's like 60 bucks a year, then five bucks an event that you attend. If you're busy and you can't attend, you don't pay anything. Uh, but every Sunday and let me go over here to your 5k club every Sunday, Paul puts out the support and resistance zones. And of course my internet slows down to grandma's speed. Puts them out right here on the spreadsheets. Anyhow, what, we're, what we are working on on this is to integrate these, <coughs> excuse me, in a basically like a file that we could push to you that since you're already a trade station or excuse me uh, a trading view customer we can take those levels and then just push them to your trading view platform so uh, kind of like when you go to your indicators and it's invite only scripts uh, it'll basically be a pushed out deal that's locked only to 5k club members that are, uh, that have a trading view platform and it would already have those levels put in there. So over here in your, uh, object tree over here, you would just have, you know, 5k levels and they would be dated last Sunday. So then whatever the new Sunday is, you can delete the old ones and just add the new ones in and it will have all the support resistant zones in there. We're, um, that'll save a lot of time for people. A lot of people don't use them and they should. And that I think that will help people. I didn't have my video on too. If you guys want to see my bald head. Uh, I think that'll help people use them that are not currently using them. Um, a, a trailing stop also is going to be coming into here that's not on here now, uh, which would be nice to let those runners just run and not have to sit there and babysit them. And then also the ability to, right now you can name a trend line or excuse me, like a horizontal line. I can drop this horizontal line, right click it settings text and i can say test line and it says test line well right now i can't do that with uh, a channel so since this is a daily chart i can right click this name it and it would say daily chart that way when you're looking at your chart uh, you can use multiple time frames like i'm going to teach you every wednesday and like i'm going to go through tonight over and over and over Sometimes I think I sound like a, a robot repeating myself, but you, you need it to follow the rules on here. 
Uh, but it would just help out saying 240 uh, chart or channel, one uh, daily, uh, 60 minute, 15 minute, whatever it may be. That way later on when you go back to it and you're on a different time frame, you can look at it and zoom out and you're like, oh, that's the daily channel or what, whatever it may be. So that's coming and what else? They're, they're working on a multi-monitor support, um, like a desktop version that would actually run on your computer. Uh, maybe even more intense uh, since it is on the computer and you don't have to do it through the, um, their platform is phenomenal for being online. But anywho, let's get past that and go on to <laughs> Trevor, you cracked me up that I polished it up just for the class. <laughs> All right, I am going, what do you guys want to see tonight before I go rolling along on here? There was nothing going on in the markets today, guys. I didn't take any trades. That there, It was gut feeling wasn't good. Market didn't look good. None of the indicators said to take anything. And if, you know, when you're grading a trade, one thing said yes and four said no. So... Yeah, Federico, you know, uh, SQ and JPM net. Let's go over here and see what we can come up with here. All right, I'm guessing. And you know what, though? It's better than a losing day. You know what I mean? Like, just, hey, Tim. You're the man. <laughs> that that's a winner in my book. That uh, all right? What is net? I mean, is that net jets? Is that what that is? I'm guessing net Cloudflare. Is that right? JPM falling out of the channel. Oh, did it fall out of the We had that on there last week, didn't we? Yeah, well, I mean, there's just no entries today. You know what I mean? It's one of those days, like, if we go back to ES, go on a 15-minute chart. Let's turn off uh, Elliott Wave and Roller Coaster and the pivots i mean look at it we just went totally freaking sideways all day long that uh they all it did was just chop people up and chop people up it has uh since it opened 1700 we have gone down quite a bit i guess 26 points uh The yellow lines were Bob's pivots. Uh, you could talk to, uh, send me a private email and uh, I'll get you the person, Mark. Uh, can't think of his name. He had he paid somebody to program him in there. Uh, I think he charges like 20 bucks for him or something. Uh, but you could put him in there. Um, all right, so let's go. Dolman, there you go, Tim. A very, very narrow day. Still holding a CAD short. Do, 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 do. What? Let's do the JPN. What is JPN? No, that's not that. What would that be? Is that? Fill me in, guys. What was that JPN from last week that you were talking about? I want to look at it so we can see. Is that JPY something else, USD? I don't want micros. JPM. Is that a Forex? Oh, JP Morgan stocks. Okay. I don't know 
why they're not showing up. Let's do all. I don't know why they're not coming up, guys. Anyhow, let's pick something else then. Uh, do, 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 do. Net. It's all exchanges. It's cloud fair. Does that sound right for net? That's what I punched in and that's what came up. That thing flew up like a rocket. Yes, okay. All right, well, let's look at this. Let's just go on a daily and let's just do, if I was going to trade this, boy, this thing took off like a rocket. What was that? All day today. Okay, so I'm going to look at this on a daily. How far back does this go? I'm gonna draw a channel, and I may not like this one, uh, but we're, I'm gonna do a daily. I'm gonna go from here to here, just to see what it looks like. Eh, I, not bad. I like these right here uh, lined up good. Let's take that off. Let's do another one from, because the trend is from here to here. I like that a lot better. Uh, see how tight that is around the, you got nice wicks coming out and touching the bottoms there. So I like that one a lot. Now we're out of there. Um, but on a daily trend, that's looking pretty good. Let me, let me take this one off just in case and let's draw one because that's not a closed candle yet so for a daily so uh but let me just take it to the tops yeah it doesn't change anything it still drops it in the same place so all right so we frame that let's lock it and then now we're going to go down to a 240 and look at the 240 i like that even more look how uh we had some nice pop the bottoms and then come up, retest and then pop up out of there. Uh, I'm not gonna draw a 240 channel because I don't need to. It's uh, It's been very, uh, it's staying inside that daily channel really good. So let's go down to an hour and let's look for some opportunities inside of this thing. So for instance, this jump right here at eight in the morning. That should have been three yesterday. Yep, five o'clock, okay. So I'm going to do a regression trend. I'm gonna do the 15 minute. It says 15 minute, but it doesn't matter uh, what it is. It's gonna be a red one, okay. So this channel, if during the day you're trading, this was just sideways, sideways day like just sideways the whole the whole day basically we just him plodded around inside of that range as soon as that thing opened up it opened up came down almost touched that and then took off like a rocket so now let's turn on roller coaster see where we're at roller coaster pick that move up coming out of there and if you guys uh, watch us every Wednesday I always tell you this is just my own personal thing I don't take the first time out of when it pops out because typically now this one didn't this one activated and just took off like a rocket uh, but a lot of times it goes out and then comes back goes out I don't take it until it breaks the first step in the ladder is what I call it, or the first shelf, whichever way you want to call it, which the first one to break it is 
the speed bar out of here that took off like a rocket out of there, there's your entry is, uh, is where I would have taken that one. And then that took you up to just bouncing around that shot all the way up. And then we just went sideways for the rest of the day. Tell me about this one shut. This one hasn't quit moving, man. It just climbed all day long going up on there. But you can see roller coaster on a one hour has done pretty darn well uh, on an hour time frame in that channel really well. Let's go down to 30 minutes. And what do we got there? 30 minutes isn't as good if you look at it. it they're short, short winners if they are. So the one hour time frame was better. Let's go to 15. All right, on 15 minutes. You got some good moves on 15 minutes. That was the massive one there, but still even here, 28.75, 27.93, so 80 cents. Uh, I'm used to I'm used to ticks, not cents on stocks because I only do the futures. Um, but I am working on going to stocks. 15 minutes isn't bad. Let's go to five. Now, I don't think I can pull up. I don't think I can get daily channel to show up on this five minute though. No, it did. Boy, that never happens. All right. Now, if you break this down, because everybody always tells you you need to look at higher time frames when you're trading, and who would look at a five minute chart? Well, you can look at a five minute chart inside of a daily time frame, and you're looking at the big picture. This is the big picture. This is where the big picture is. All right, you just know where you're at inside of the big picture and to take opportunities. Now on a five minute, didn't get a, you actually did not get any alerts on this popping off over here that it happened so fast, the things in the background just did not line up. Um, had one good one there, one good one there. Let's go to three, now three minutes you're not gonna catch. It's harder on a stock to go to a three minute uh, on anything really to go backwards. But look at roller coaster over here on a three minute. It took you out of that uh, that sideways channel before it took off like a rocket at when it opened up in the mornings. It actually alerted at 754, which you couldn't trade it till 830. Uh, it popped off at 830. Um, that's when it technically stopped out, but that was your move out, taking you out of there. But let's go, let's go to a five minute and let's go over here and isolate. I'm going to go, let's see here. This is the beginning of the day is right here. So we want to look at yesterday's higher low, which is going to be probably that one right there so candle 93.95 if you look over here 93.95 we're going to go over here and turn on Elliott wave yes uh trevor i will here 90 93.95 all right i was gonna say i thought i saw an Elliott wave on there Usually when you get those big moves up like that, that's gonna um, be an LA wave. So we had, we had one that actually popped off on the 15th. What is today, 16th, 17th. You had one on the 15th on Monday that uh, came down short one, uh, that came out there. I don't like taking a fifth wave move. Uh, when it comes in, I want it to come right back out of there and head up. I want it on a nice trending day for it to go. When it's like this, I don't take them. I don't care. Even if they work, I don't care. I just, I don't take them. That, that's just my personal deal. Now this one here, we've pulled back, pulled back. It hasn't touched it yet. If it dips down inside here, touches it down here, and then turns around and comes right back out, that's a different story on it on but i don't have a 
actually here, let's, let's grade this one right here of why not to take it. All right, and so we are going to go, it actually had a four down here, and then it ended up setting a new low over here. So we're going to draw a regression channel, and I already have them saved in here as way four pullback. Um, you can go to my JW Tick Trader uh, profile here on TradingView, and there's a video on there on how to set all of these uh, standards up. Now look at this channel when I drop it for the wave four pullback. Now on a wave four, I have it set on close. All my other channels are on high, low, close divided by three. Uh, for your wave four, it's just, uh, I think it's more accurate on close. Look at how it's not down, you know, like a, uh, an angle going, it's just horizontal, just about. So theoretically, you don't want to take a long until you're outside of this channel since it pulled all the way back down into here and you wouldn't want to go out of there. Then down over here, let's do a Fibonacci, your Fib retracement, 9140. Same thing with that. Just go to my profile on uh, trading view. And it's got a video on there on how to set the settings for this 9140. You take it from the in front of the fourth, go to the high of the three and drop it. And if you look, let me move this up a little bit. We did not crown outside of there. So that was one, that was a yes to, to go long. I'm not going to take that thing because it's nasty looking, just cutting through there sideways, popping out, coming back, popping out, coming back. All that's doing is chopping you up, thinking that you have a trade that's taken off out of there. Uh, now, roller coaster did pick up, uh, what was that, 3139, 20, 25 uh, cent move. I mean, you got 100 contracts on it, uh, or 1,000, you got 1,000 contracts on there would have been a little bit of money, but this is a no coming out of there. You are yellow. Yeah, I never got one red dot for this pullback. I like to see some red for the pullback and it's just been, even when it's coming out, it's yellow. Then it's going back down green in there. I don't know. I just don't like it. Uh, you can kind of get a feel of this guys when you trade it on a regular basis of, that's why I like to trade um, the same couple things all the time. So I call it like the thumb on the heartbeat of the business. When I sold real estate, that was one of the things that I think made me so successful was I was so involved in every single aspect of running a new construction neighborhood. I wasn't somebody that dressed up in a suit and stayed inside the model home in the air conditioning. I was typically in shorts, a golf shirt and tennis shoes on a golf cart running in and out of every single house every single day. And I knew what was going on. I knew the heartbeat of the business. I knew if there was a problem, I knew if there, everything was going smooth. I knew if we were behind, it's the same way with trading. You've got to, you've got to know the product intimately of what you're trading. Uh, I don't know anything about this. I can just tell you by looking at it, it's sideways. I wouldn't take it. Uh, no that uh i think let's turn on volume real quick yeah there's no volume no volume out of there uh at all and then just in case let's turn on bits and let's confirm it bits did cross over right here but then stopped right at the channel line turned around and came back down uh, didn't get any kind of a move at all. You want a nice, I mean, you want it to cross over. Now your 6.4 moving average. No, we weren't on top of that 6.4 moving average lines up top. So there's no, no 6.4 moving average. That's just not, not a good one. Let's go. Uh, I'm going to go, you guys know I like ES. That's my favorite. Um, I kind of, say I, I have my heartbeat, I have my thumb on the heartbeat of the ES. I know what's going on on it. 
So let's turn everything off. I erased uh, my channels on here earlier so that I could draw new ones with you guys. All right, so go to daily. We're gonna go from that pivot down. Boy, we are so close to getting to that gap. That's like the magic gap right there on it. Let me turn off volume. And then we're gonna do regression channel from here to the current. Drop down. I like it. Everything lines up. Looks good. Just for the hell of it. Nope. No roller coaster moves going up yet. Now we go down to 240. Like it. Like it even better. You, uh, you see more, some more opportunities in here. Um, I don't like taking anything on that center channel line unless you get a roller coaster move, but I do not like taking 240. I don't like taking daily 240, even hour roller coaster moves because there's too much stuff that can happen in the news um, that could bury you. I like them to know what the general long term of things is going on. Uh, but let's go down to an hour in this channel and see what we got. All right, so there's here's some good ones. Here's one right off that center channel line that popped off 31.22 and ran up to, uh, Jesus, 32.31, 110 points. That was a nice, nice move. This one here, I would have been reluctant to take this one because we've been in this channel for so long. Even though it came out of it, it came right back up. I would have waited for what it did exactly right here. I would have waited for the entry, the next candle to open, go down and retest it, and then take the long from there uh, on it. But that's on an hour. Let's go to 15 minutes and see what we can find inside there. All right, and then, so you don't have to drag it back, just hit that reset chart, it comes back. All right, so remember on that uh, one hour, it didn't show an entry on there. And on the 15 minute, it did. So it actually gave you the roller coaster down there and then turned around reversed, gave you the next one up. I still probably wouldn't have taken that one until we came out and then retested it and then took off. But it was still 3,000 and went to 31.14. That's 460 ticks. Not, a, I don't know about you, if, you know, 460 ticks is a nice move for the day. But uh, Trevor, I hope that helps you on, there's your daily time frame with a 15 minute roller coaster. Now, if you go down to, let's see here, you're going to have to go to an hour. When you go down into the five minute time frame, Let's just do, I don't think, this thing's not gonna let me do a, for today it was so sideways that it's really not going to do anything. Huh? There's a little bit in there. All right, so we know this red channel is on a, and this is why I wanna be able to right click and name it so I can say 60 minute channel, daily channel. So when I see these lines, I know what they are. So let's go down to five minutes and see what we could have picked up today inside, even though it was a crazy sideways day. Here was a trade first thing, first thing in the morning was a, or no, it was last night, sorry. At midnight, there was a nice one there going down. This one actually was a failed one that went the other way, took off like a rocket. Is that two, seven a.m.? The 16th, yes, was yesterday. So we came all the way down, hit the bottom of that channel, came back up, and then we just hop, hop, hop. This is on a five minute. So you really, even though this one hit, I wouldn't have taken anything because there's too much chop going on in there. Uh, this one was a good one today at right at the end of the day. 
Yep, between two and three o'clock. Yep, this one, this was your only, really and truthfully to me, this was the only good move of the day. Now it's 31.20 and took you down to the bottom of the channel. I tighten my stops up. When you take the trade from that center channel line on roller coaster, which I think lined up almost to the, almost to the line, as soon as it touches that channel line, I'm one tick behind it with my stop loss because it's always, it, well, I can't say always because I don't know what it's going to do, but in my book, in my experience, it touches that line and then rips back. And that's exactly what it did. Uh, so 3120 to 3095. That's a hundred point move. Yeah. hundred point move. Uh, out of, that's the only one I see there on five. Let's go to four minutes. You see anything more in there? Not really. The same, the same move there. Go down to a three. And this is where roller coaster really comes in handy for it. I, uh, I think I told you guys this last week and I was telling somebody, I've had three other webinars today, guys. So I'm a little webinared out. Uh, my butt's been sitting in this chair for too long. Plus I traded this morning. Um, now you did get it on a three minute. You did get this move out of the channel um, when the market opened tonight at 17. Yeah, so this was a fresh, uh, fresh roller coaster move. Let me blow this up so you can see it. So you, if you go back and you're looking at in the groove, it's had some good ones. Now it's had some ones that didn't hit either. So I wouldn't say necessarily that this has been in the groove. What the two before were good moves and like really good ones. They're on the center channel line and up, center channel line down. So. Uh, that's the only time that I will play the center channel line. I don't like messing with them. I wait until we get down here and write it up or at the top and write it down. But we opened up and just like I was telling you, I don't take it till it gets past the first step or the first shelf, whatever you want to call it. And look, look what we did. We came right down. As soon as that one tagged that line that it would set a new shelf, that'd be your short there at 3097 and went down to 79 so almost 80 ticks 75 roughly on there two minute i don't know if i would take i don't think there's much more on a two minute no actually you got one here that wasn't on the other one one two three four five six that one was a small one as soon as roller coaster hits and takes off i move my stop loss one tick profit to cover my uh, expenses on it if it comes back and stops me out, I didn't lose anything. But if it's one of these runners that just pops out and takes off like a rocket, like this one, where it just boom and goes, uh, then I got, I got myself covered. But if it comes back like this one, where it comes out and then comes back down in and dips all the way down like this, you're going to cover your CYA yourself by moving it one tick up. That's just me that uh, this is the recommended stop loss that the system generates that you won't be stopped out. And if you look, it didn't. Uh, this one painted, but you would have taken some profit out of there before it pulled back up out of there. A lot of these, you pull back out. You got to pay attention once they take off and go. Plus, if you look in the past and you say, all right, where are we at in the groove? That, uh, all right, we had two runners right there, three runners, but the rest of them were small. So, okay, so if they're small, let's do this one. If it popped off at 30.92 and it went to 30.99, that's only seven points. So I, when it takes off, I go to the first tick to profit. Once it gets to 10 ticks, uh, then I just move it up that, uh, and take it. Uh, if it stops me out and then basically, when you get down to a two minute time frame, you're basically just scalping uh, or you're getting part of a bigger move for, let me see, this is only 30, let's go to an hour. Then you're, you're using that two minute to get into some of these bigger moves like this that you see a lot of times there's a two minute or excuse me, three minute um, roller coaster move that pops off and gets you into one. Once you're in a two or a three minute, 
no matter where it's at in the trade, always go back and cycle back through the next couple time frames up to see what's going on to see if you got another one. But you also have got to check your higher time frames because if you have a five minute that starts off over here and you know the center channel line is two points ahead of you, probably not going to take it because it's probably going to hit and stop uh, on their same way with going down. If you get an alert and you're this close to the bottom, you don't want to take it. You're in right now, Tim. Well, there's one right there. We broke out of the channel that uh, I don't know if we'll be in it. That's a uh, one hour. Let's go down to three. Yep, there's one right there for you. Okay, cool. That, uh, yeah, 3101, 22, 80, 84 ticks. If you got in at the beginning of that. But that's the importance of using a channel and then also going through your time frames to see where you're at because you got to know what's going on. That, you get too risky if you start popping out of these channel lines because you don't know uh, the big picture of what's going on. Uh, boy, you were risky, Tim, that uh, I wouldn't have taken that one going out of there, but good, it's a good move. But this is also what this software does is it calculates a lot of things that you and I can't do in nanoseconds. And plus you look down over here, all right? Here comes the entry for the second time in it. We went from, let's blow this up a little bit where you can see it better. So when that second bar came out and made the second shelf, I call it our second step. We were solid red. Your oscillator went from crowning green down into crowning red. And on that bar, we were one, two, three, four, five bars into that oscillator and it was getting deeper and deeper. Your stochastic crossed over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 21 minutes before uh, your stochastic crossed over. So when it hit, it took off. Now your false break, false breakout down here is saying stay in it. That uh, it's gonna stop you out right here, but we'll see what happens. What time is it now? 43, we got 15 more minutes. We'll see where this thing ends up on it. Now, Let's look at an Elliott wave on this three minutes. Let's see if we can find us an Elliott wave in here. Let's just isolate from the beginning of this. 9561. And 95.61. Didn't change it much. That actually lost one out there. So not a lot in there. Now if I isolate over here, 10,265, let's see what it changes it to. Okay. So now, if I would have isolated that and known that it was a fifth wave move, look what roller coaster did. It picked off your fifth wave move on there. So that was a damn good trade, Tim, that uh, for getting in there. Now, roller coaster typically, this is actually, I didn't even look at it because I don't look at a three minute that often. That if you look at this coming down, typically your roller coaster is a third wave. Uh, it picks up the third wave, not uh, necessarily all the time. But most of the time, I don't even run Elliott Wave, and I wait until I see one of these long moves, and then I look, which I didn't look in this instance, which looks like a one, a two, a one, a two, and a three, and then a four and a five. Now, what this is going to become is the five. This fifth wave is just going to become a th Actually, you know what? This appears to me that this is going to become a wave three, or just a longer wave three. We're going to have a fourth wave pullback, probably to test the bottom of that channel again, and then a fifth wave back down. 
that would be my guess of what's going to go on that. Thirty ninety one. Yep, there you go. You're out now. Hey, well, it, it, scalp it off, man. All right, can you discuss your strategy? Would you take the trade on a break of the wave three high? Um, what do you mean, Trevor? Uh, on the, let me turn off uh, Elliott wave. Okay, on a channel, how, I mean, just, all right, look at the channel and you tell me where you would take a trade from there that we know the top, the center, and the bottom because it's been inside this channel. Now, we've whipped out a couple times, but for the most part, this is where we've played around. That... And keep in mind, this is a three minute chart too. But we know that this is a one hour channel. So this is a higher time frame zone that we're taking. Basically, you're scalping money off, uh, scalping trades off in here. Taking a trade, I was telling you, I don't take a center channel line trade, but if roller coaster pops off a signal on it, look how many times that it was very close to the center channel line. This one was a little bit higher, but you have basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades in that time frame off that center channel. And these two are right on the money. And then look at your third wave down. Look where it went. It touched. Let's turn. Look at your th the roller coaster move. It came down. It touched the center or the bottom channel line and pulled back. So that would and there there's my reason why I move it to the channel line and I take it. It pulled all the way back, which was the fourth wave. And then if we turn on Elliott wave again. All right, let's. Do this one right here. I'm going to turn off roller coaster to give us some space on here. And we're going to do a fourth wave pullback. We're going to go from the wave three to the wave four. All right. You get that regression channel, wave three to the wave four. Now I touched the bottom of the candle, but it does, it does its own calculation of the close. So you don't want to take this until you're outside of that channel. You also want to be on the outside of the 6-4 moving average. And look where we closed today right here. And then we opened below that 6-4 moving average line. So you're outside of the channel line. One reason to go short. You're below the 6-4 moving average. Another reason to go short. Bias dots, red for longer time, higher time frames to go short, take the short, that there's another reason to go short. Now, the one thing that scares me is the oscillator went thin, 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 and then it was barely the open. Now, we did go, what did it go down when it opened? 3104. I, uh, it's only seven points, but that's in three minutes. Uh, so it's 21 ticks, so not a bad little move. Uh, oscillator, uh, we didn't get a, on this fourth wave pullback, we didn't get a crown. So that's a negative for me. If, the, if I don't get a crown, I don't take the trade. I just, I just don't like it. If I have a crown, it usually works. If I don't have a crown, those are the ones that fall apart. Uh, and then your stochastics, Crossed over back over here before the close. And then when we opened, we kind of opened in the middle. I don't know that uh, probably wouldn't have taken that one uh, out of that. And a lot of times, um, you know, I want to see what the first, let's see, we're 17. 1700. 
a lot of times you're going to do the opening range depending on what time frames you use and then go long or short above those depending on which ones you want yeah I'm, let's go back to three so that one there i i really uh when it first opened, you probably would have scalped off, you probably would have got 10 or 12 uh, ticks out of that, which is, I mean, that's $125 uh, trade uh, in less than three minutes. And then you wouldn't have got back into this thing again until we went below, really truthfully, the, the low of the open, so if, which would be this candle right here. That, uh, But even then, 3097. I'm not, I'm not looking for a 10 tick move. I'm looking for something on this type of trade that, you know, came down next one open on it to go short and go down. That's the, uh, I'm looking for something like this. That's 3117 and runs down to 3094 where you're pulling 80 ticks instead of 10. Um, that's what I'm focusing on. Uh, the three minute ones, you can do some scalping out of there. Um, they're just harder to manage when you get on there. All right. Uh, Trevor, did that answer your question on the taking a trade on the channel? Man, it gets messy when you get down to that two and three minutes, guys. Just so much easier to see on a 15-minute move. This is interesting. All right, see this 15-minute, how this was all day, basically. Even if this thing came out of here, I was telling you, I wouldn't take it for a long on it. it uh, yes, Tim, they're, they're way harder to manage. Because uh, you got to spend so much time babysitting them because you're, well, like that one candle, you're in and out. It was a three-minute candle, which means uh, that may have happened in 40 seconds. So you got to open, place trade, move stop loss, move, you know what I mean? You got to do all that stuff. That's a lot of freaking work when one of these other ones um, you take off. Hey, uh, something else, let me show you guys. In uh, TradingView's platform, they have this new auto fib retracement tool. Now, not that you don't already have enough colors on your chart. Check out how accurate these are. Look at these. We stopped on that, started on that one, came down, went up, came down. I mean, the uh, resistance right there on that one and then pop back down uh, coming out of there. And then we came back up and tested that zero line twice. And then you can take it, let me see here. And there's a reverse. You can right click it and then move them down. Look where we stopped. Uh, it's pretty cool. I've, I've never been like, verse in using fibs. Uh, Paul really was the first person to get me start using them on measuring between the exit of the Elliott wave and the target zone. And you need to have some fresh air. I don't do it uh, by measuring it because I can just look at it and see it. Uh, but it's pretty cool. Uh, that way, depending off the markets going the other direction, you can do reverse and it does them going up instead of going down on it yeah that's true tim all right guys we're at the end of the day 755 that says there anything else you want to see beforehand next week guys i am going to go through a um i'm not going to take any charts from anybody on analyzing anything I'm gonna go from, we've had a lot of new TradingView um, buyers for indicators, a lot, lot, like we did a special uh, webinar today for like 20 of them. Um, we've got, 
I'm going to do like if you were brand new to TradingView, blank chart, how to import the indicators again, how to save, how to create that 9140 FIB, uh, your fourth wave pullback channel, save it as a default, your daily channel, save it as a default. I'm going to go, I'm going to spend the entire hour on how to set your chart up uh, and then also going down over here on the right hand side and doing your object tree, uh, you know, grouping things together, putting a folder, renaming it, channels, um, that way you can easily turn everything on and off, stuff like that. But that's what I'm gonna do next week. All right guys, you all have a good night. That uh, And if you need anything, let me put my, there's my email address. If you guys, uh, if you need help with something, you know, I can't, can't give you trading advice uh, and stuff, but if you have a question, I have people that text me stuff all the time. They're like, hey, take a quick look at this. Just don't abuse it and send it to me, you know, for every single trade you do. <laughs> all right, Federico, see you guys, Tim, Greg. Christian, Gary, Christian, I haven't seen you in here. But uh, good to have you in here. Uh, Juan, Mark, Maddox, Trevor, see y'all. Good night, good night, good night. See ya.